the stories of mahabharata retold by sudipta bhaumik welcome dear friends to another episode of the stories of mahabharata in the last episode we heard about arjuna's journey to acquire weapons from the gods we also heard how arjuna pleased lord shiva and received the deadly pashupat weapon as a gift Arjuna sat under a banyan tree and waited for the chariot to arrive. He was curious of the heavens. He knew that a mortal being could go to the heavens only after his death. How could he visit the abode of the gods in flesh and blood? But Indra wouldn't lie to him. Moments later, the sky is lit up with a crimson yellow glow. With a deep sonorous sound the divine chariot of Indra came down piercing the clouds and landed in front of Arjuna. Arjuna was awestruck by the beauty and complexity of this huge craft. The vehicle was powered by the strength of a thousand horses. Machines built with gears, chains and wheels ran on different parts of this fantastic craft and made a peculiar sound. The deck was loaded with various weapons ranging from swords, bows, arrows, spears, missiles and many others. The charioteer Matali opened the door and said, "Arjuna, I'm here to take you to the heavens. Please mount the chariot. Your father Indra and the other gods are waiting to meet you." Arjuna bowed to him and said, I am honored to have this opportunity to ride this divine chariot. Let the divine horses that powered this craft calm down a little while I finish my prayers. Arjuna came back to the banyan tree and worshipped his ancestors and asked for their blessings before embarking on his journey. Then he stepped into the chariot and Matali closed the doors. With a deep growl the craft powered up and lifted off the ground and to arjuna's amazement the chariot climbed to the clouds above and raced towards the heavens at an incredible speed soon the chariot left the visible world and entered a realm in space where there was no sun or moon the stars which looked tiny from the earth now seemed much larger the charioteer matali looked at arjuna and said partha Those great men whom you thought to be the stars they live happily in their proper abodes in the heavens As the chariot landed in the heavens the Gandharvas and the rishis came to welcome Arjuna As Arjuna got off the chariot they placed garlands on his neck sprinkled fragrant waters on him while singing welcome songs and hymns Indra The king of the gods came to welcome his son. Arjuna bowed down to touch his feet and pay his respect. Indra grabbed him and pulled him to his chest in a warm embrace. "Welcome to Amaravati, dear Arjuna. Your arrival has made us all happy," Indra said. He escorted Arjuna to his fantastic palace and said, "Rest a little, Arjuna." later we will have a grand celebration in your honor after arjuna had some rest he was escorted to the court of indra the magnificent hall was decorated with gold and precious jewels and it dazzled arjuna it was a sight he had never experienced before he looked around and saw the gods the sages and rishis sitting all around the hall arjuna bowed to them to pay his respects Indra was sitting in the center of the hall in a huge ornate throne celestial maidens stood by his side and fanned him with peacock feathers when indra saw him he smiled and said come here my son come and sit beside me 
Arjuna walked up to the throne and bowed down to Indra. Indra stood up and pulled him to the throne next to him. We have a special performance composed and choreographed in your honor by our Gandharva musicians and our Apsara dancers. I am sure you will like it. He then raised his hands and said, Let the celebrations begin. The Gandharva musicians, Tumburu and others, began their musical performance. The sweet melody enchanted Arjuna. As the music built up to its crescendo, the beautiful Apsaras, Kritachi, Menaka, Rambha and Urvasi, dressed in fine golden fabric and precious jewellery, entered the floor and began their spectacular dance performance. The sensuous bodies of these celestial maidens undulated to the tunes and rhythms of the intoxicating music. The audience was in a trance and so was Arjuna. He had never witnessed a performance like this in his life. His eyes were transfixed on Urvasi, whose beauty he was beyond any description. He lost his sense of time and place. Even when the performance concluded, he sat still, staring at Urvasi as she walked away. Indra gave Arjuna a gentle nudge and said, My son... The performance is over. Arjuna blushed at Indra's comment. He said, I am sorry, father. The music and dance mesmerized me. These performances happen every evening. You are welcome to attend any time, Indra said, as they walked towards the palace dining hall. During dinner, Indra said, Arjuna, it seems you have a strong liking for music and dance. Why don't you take some lessons from Chitrasena, the Gandharva? He is the best instructor one can have. Archuna was a bit surprised at the proposal. He said, Yes, I love music and dance, but, but I am a Kshatriya and, and my job is to fight battles, not dance. Indra smiled and said, I don't think it's forbidden for a Kshatriya to practice music and dance. Music and dance can help you relax and be well prepared for a battle. It can also make you more creative in using your openry. I will instruct Chitrasena to teach you music and dance from tomorrow. Arjuna was still hesitant. He said, But father, I am here to learn about your divine weapons. Don't worry. You will learn how to use the weapons. But learn the performing arts too. You never know when they will come in handy. The next day, as per Indra's advice, Arjuna began his lessons in music and dance from the Gandharva guru Chitrasena. Arjuna had the natural talent and picked up the skills quite easy. His dancing skills impressed Chitrasena. When Arjuna would dress up as a woman and dance to the music of the Gandharvas, nobody could tell that it was none other than the valiant Prince Arjuna, the fiercest archer on earth. Along with his music lessons, Arjuna also received training in using the divine weapons that Indra had offered him. The weapons had terrible destruction power and Arjuna had to learn how to fire them and how to retract them when needed. Soon he became an expert in using the weapons which till then were available only to the gods. But every evening Arjuna would attend the dance performance of the gorgeous Apsara Urvasi. When Urvasi danced, Arjuna couldn't even blink his eyes. Her every movement, her every step, her every stance gave him immense pleasure and joy. Watching Urvasi dance, Arjuna's face would light up in an ethereal glow, as if he was watching something magical and divine. Indra noticed Arjuna's infatuation towards Urvasi and thought that something must be done to make him happy. He called Chitrasena and said, It seems Arjuna is in love with Urvasi. Go and tell Urvasi she should not disappoint the great Kuru prince. So Chitrasena went to Urvasi and said, 
My dear, the great Kuru Prince Arjuna is attracted to you. Lord Indra has requested that you pay him a visit. The news didn't come as a surprise to Urvasi. She also noticed the way Arjuna looked at her during her performances. Appreciative and lustful stares from men were not new to a celestial beauty like Urvasi. But Arjuna was different. The human prince's graceful looks impressed Urvasi and she felt a strange attraction towards him. Urvasi smiled and said, Chitrasena, please tell Lord Indra, it will be my pleasure to entertain Prince Arjuna. As Chitrasena left the room, Urvasi began to prepare herself. She bathed in fragrant water, put on her most sensuous dress, wore pearl necklaces on her long and graceful neck and golden bracelets on her nimble wrist. She put on silver anklets that tinkled with each step. She chewed beetle leaves that made her lips crimson colored and her breath fragrant. And then, when the moon rose to adorn the night sky, she departed for Arjuna's residence. Arjuna was in his room, going through the procedures he had learned to use the divine weapons that day. He knew the only way to perfect his skills is through rigorous practice. He went through his notes again and again to make sure he missed nothing. Just then, he heard a knock on the door. Arjuna opened the door and was struck by a thunderbolt. The beautiful Apsara Urvasi was standing at his door. He was in a state of shock and amazement. Urvasi smiled and said, Prince Arjuna, won't you ask me to come in? Or should I leave from your doorstep? Arjuna was embarrassed. He held the door wide open and said, Oh, oh, how rude of me. Please, please come in. Urbasi stepped into the room. Arjuna closed the door and with folded palms said, My lady, please accept my deepest regards. Tell me, what can I do for you? I am your most obedient servant. Urbasi laughed and said, My servant? <laughs> No, no, my dear Arjuna, tonight I am here to serve you. Arjuna looked surprised. Serve me? I, I, I am sorry, I, I don't understand. Urvasi came close to Arjuna and said, Really? Then let me help you. Your dance teacher Chitrasena says that you seem to be quite infatuated with me. At least... That's what Lord Indra thinks of you. The way you look at me during my dance performances made him think that you have developed a strong desire for me. Urvasi moved closer to Arjuna and put her hand on his chest. To tell you the truth, I have also developed a strong desire for you, my handsome prince. So please accept me and let us fulfill our mutual desire. She whispered into Arjuna's ears. Arjuna sprang away from Urvasi as if he was bitten by a snake. He covered his ears with his hands and said, Please don't say those words to me and make me a sinner. I have never looked at you with lust and desire. You are like a mother to me, just like my mother Kunti. No, no, I am not your mother, Urvasi said. I am an Apsara and Apsaras are nobody's mother. But you gave birth to my ancestor Ayu, the son of Pururaba. You are the great grandmother of Puru. You are greater than my mother. And that's why I looked at you with amazement. How could you be still so youthful, so beautiful and so graceful? Pardon me if my eyes carried the wrong message. 
Arjuna knelt in front of Urvasi's feet with his palms folded, but Urvasi was furious. No man has ever dared to refuse her, she said. I told you, I am a celestial maiden, an apsara. You should not treat me like a mere mortal. The laws of human relationships don't govern our actions. Many of your ancestors have had relationships with me and have fulfilled my desire with pleasure. You should not hesitate either. Come, come to me, please me. Urvasi held Arjuna and tried to wrap him in her embrace. Arjuna pulled himself out of her hands and fell down to her knees. I beg your pardon, my lady. Please, don't lure me any more. I cannot think of you as a lover. I can think of you only as a mother figure. Urvasi was trembling with rage. She said, Arjuna, I came here at your father's request and offered myself to you. I offered you the greatest pleasure a man could dream of. But like a eunuch, you rejected me and denied to fulfill my desire. For this, I curse you. You will become a eunuch and live an unworthy life amongst women. Urvasi stormed out of the room with Arjuna lying helpless on the floor. When Indra came to know of Urvasi's curse, he called Arjuna and said, My son, today you have made Kunti a proud mother. Your self-control and resolve would even put a rishi to shame. Don't worry about your curse. During the thirteenth year of your exile, when you have to live in hiding, this curse would come handy. You'll spend the year as a eunuch dancer as your disguise. But at the end of the year, you'll regain your manhood. Relieved, Arjuna spent five long years in the heavens with his father Indra and became an expert in divine weapons and a virtuoso in music and dance. The Stories of Mahabharata is written, directed and told by Shudipta Bomek. Audio engineering, original music and sound design by Avi Ziv. Find us online at facebook.com slash Mahabharata podcast. Join the group for updates and news. Subscribe to the podcast using iTunes or any other podcast catcher. On Twitter, we are at Mahabharat Audio. The podcast is distributed under the Creative Commons non-commercial license.